good evening, everybody, and a warm welcome to you. Thanks so much for joining us tonight for our midweek service. Psalm 100 and verse 2 says, Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him singing with joy. So wherever you are, can we just sing with joy together as we worship the Lord? Throughout the universe display Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on that cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. My soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall be?
Father, we praise you, we honor you, we magnify you, we give praise and glory unto you. Thank you, Father, Lord, for another evening of our gathering together. Father, for our online Bible study. Father, we thank you. It's always an honor, Father, to come before your word, to study your word, to meditate upon your word, because we know that you will speak to our heart today in the name of Jesus. And we open up our heart to you, Father, Lord. I pray, Father, Lord, that your word that gives life will minister life to us today in the name of Jesus. I pray that every heart will be blessed and everyone will receive something from your word today, that you will speak to every heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you have said that this is a year of unusual elevation. We receive that unusual elevation. We receive wisdom, instructions, guidance, and direction for each and every one of us so that we will be elevated in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father Lord. We bless your name and we honor you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening and welcome to our online Bible study. I'm so glad and it's an honor for to bring the word of God to us today. So let's, um, like I usually say, let's get our Bibles, let's get our notepads and let's dig into the word and have a lovely time in the presence of the Lord. So this month we're talking about our theme this year, the word of the Lord to us this, this year, which is unusual elevation. So today I want to talk to us about promotion. Amen. I mean, one of the meanings of promotion is elevation. So it just all goes together. So I'm just going to be talking to us about God's will is for our promotion. Amen. God's will is promotion. It's God's will that we be promoted in every area of our lives. But you know, in thinking about this um, promotion, thinking about elevation, it's so easy to determine in our, on our own what's elevation is what we want as elevation and in just meditating especially on the fact that this is a you know is a is the word of the lord to us this year i be, I, be, I, re, I think at the beginning of the year when pastor shared with us that this is the word of the lord to us one of the things i tend to do is when a man of god preaches or says something specific that is the word of god to us i tend to go back to god and say lord what is my part to play in this, if you're saying that this is our year of unusual elevation, not just as a church, but of course I'm a member of King's House, so that's the word of the Lord to me. So I want to know, Lord, what do I do? You know, and I believe that that's one of the things that we need to do. What is God's will for us? You know, there is no elevation, there is no um, promotion outside the will of God, outside what God wants for us. And one of the scriptures that I usually love meditating on every now and then is Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23. Uh, I'll read it in a few versions. KJV says, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. And when you look at it in New Living Translation, it gives more meaning. It says, I know Lord that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. You know, so it's God that plans our course. It's God that gives us, you know, his plan for us. Before the foundation of the world, God already has a plan for us. So, you know, if you want to be promoted, if you want to be elevated, if you want unusual elevation, we need to be sure that we're where God wants us to be so that he can promote us. Where he, and I'm not just talking about ministry, like, you know, you have to be a, mini, a minister of God. No, that God has different plans for each and every one of us. Some of us, he just wants us to be housewives for now. Sometimes, some of us, he wants us to be doctors. But in whatever area of our lives, God's will is promotion. But for us to actually be promoted, to be elevated, first of all, we need to find out from God, Lord, am I where you want me to be? doing what you want me to do and how you want me to be doing it. So we need to be sure that we are right in the center of the will of God. Amen. And in talking about promotion this evening, I want us to look at Psalm 75. Psalm 75 verses 5 to 7. It says, Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. That's, you know, I don't know about you, that sounds like pride, isn't it? It says, For promotion... Commit neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. 
But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. So if God, promotion comes from God, we don't have to look to any man. We don't have to look to the system of this world for promotion. Promotion comes from God. And the Living Bible says this. I like the Living Bible. It says, for promotion and power come from nowhere on earth, but only from God. He promotes one and deposes another. Amen. He promotes one and deposes another. May the Lord not depose us. Amen. And if we, as we are going on, you see scriptures where why sometimes you know we get demoted or get you know we get you know deposed. And that's that's because we're not doing what God wants us to do. God is always a God of wanting to promote us. And you know, promotion in Hebrew actually means to lift up, to raise up, to elevate to exalt that's what god wants us to do in our lives and it's not just like i said it's not in just in job you know sometimes when we hear promotion or elevation we just think of our career we think of jobs god wants us to be elevated in every area of our lives if we're students if we're young and we're still in school god wants us to be promoted if we're just starting in job god wants us to be promoted but for us to do that we need to be where god wants us to be i know the merriam webster the, um, dictionary says the act of being raised up in position of rank to ascend, amen. That's what we want to do. We want to ascend, to advance, amen, and upgrade. So God's will, and that's why God gave us that word this year, that we should be, you know, this should be a year of unusual elevation. That's what God wants us to, you know, to have, unusual elevation. So this evening, in talking about, you know, God's will being a promotion, I just, you know, God, I want us to know that promotion starts with the heart. And using, you know, promotion starts with the heart. And one of the best examples that I can find in the Bible is the story of David in Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we'll start from um, verse 1. We might not read it um, one verse after the other, but let's just start from, from verse um, 1. And here he's actually talking about God having rejected Saul. We won't go into all of that. And, you know, and God was speaking to the prophet Samuel. And he says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long without mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? You know, this story is actually, you know, it's so apt for what we're talking about this evening. Saul was a king. He was advanced. He was elevated. He was promoted to be a king. But now... God has actually rejected him from reigning as a king. So we, you know, this is one thing we can learn. What did Saul do? You know, this is not this is not for this Bible study, but you can go into your Bible and look at what did Saul do that got him demoted. Amen. So he says, Seeing I've rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So God has provided himself a king among Jesse's sons. So that's another question. It's not just one son. So let's just look into the story. They just, he said among his sons, but there's one. So what? Two doubts in the person that he chose. That's what we're going to be talking about this evening. Why did God choose this person? Amen. And let's just go to verse 3. And it says, And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee that what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him who I name unto thee. And that's, you know, we looked at that scripture in Psalm 75. It's God that promotes. He is the, you know, promotion comes from God. God said, the person that I chose, in verse 3 says, uh, NKJV says, you shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So that's God that elected him. He didn't call himself. God called him. God was looking for the right person to replace Saul. Amen. And, you know, like we said in Psalm 75, it's God that lifts one up and puts one, another one down. So he's lifting up David. Unfortunately, Saul is being put down. And, you know, God will use people to get you into the position that he has for you. You know, David, who we're going to be talking about, was doing his own thing. But God was about to lift him up. You know, Psalm 75, 10 says, I will cut off the strength of evil men, says the Lord and increase the power of good men in their place. So it's God that lifts us up. It's God that promotes. Now let's go to verse 6 of that chapter. 
And he says, And it came to pass when they were come that he looked, that Samuel looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. That's verse 6. I mean, of course, he looked at Eliab. He must have looked at everything about him and thought, Yeah, this is the one. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. May we have a good heart in Jesus' name. See, so he says there that mm -mm, you put the, your own idea of promotion is not my own idea. The message um, translation says, but God told Samuel, looks and everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and stature. I've already eliminated him. God judges persons differently than humans do. Men and women look at the face. God looks into the heart. So that's one of the things we have to think about. The state of our heart is what God is looking at for before he promotes us, before he elevates us. What's the state of our heart? And that's the things that we're going to be learning from David today. And you know, verses 8 to 10, the Lord passed over all his other sons. See, so in spite of their appearance, and apparently further study shows that each son reveals hidden character flaws that disqualify them. Let's look at verses 11 to 13. It says, and Samuel said unto Jesse, so he got, I mean, he went through all the sons that, you know, they thought, I mean, I'm saying, even Jesse must have thought to himself that, okay, all these ones are the ones, you know, God is going to choose from. They're the eldest ones, as you can see. So verse 11 says, and Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, hmm, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he come hither. Verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Amen. So you see, God, I mean, sent Samuel to go and pick up a king. And we can see that, you know, Samuel looked at the appearance, the outward appearance. He had everything. But what God looks at is different from what man looks at. You know, in Acts chapter 13, verse 22, he says, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. That is a wonderful testimony that, you know, when God testifies of you to say that, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. That means God knew he could trust David. And if we look at the story of David, we know that David did make mistakes. He wasn't perfect, but God knew that he had David's heart and that's what matters that even though we make mistakes even we don't do everything right if God has a heart he can turn us around amen David had in his heart what it took to be promoted may we have in our heart what it takes to be promoted and I believe that we, we do we're children of God we have the Spirit of the Lord in us amen and David's desire was to fulfill the will of God that was God's testimony of him what is in your heart Amen? What's in your own heart? What's in your own heart is so important because that's you. What is in our heart is who we are. David was not, I mean, if you look at it, David was busy doing what he had to do. David was just busy with his father's business, serving. So David was not pursuing promotion. We don't have to pursue promotion. If we do, if we are where God wants us to be, doing what God wants us to do, and he knows that he has a heart, he will promote us, he will elevate us, as long as we're where we are to be, doing what we have to do, working in faith, working in love, God will promote us. We don't have to promote, uh, pursue promotion. When we do the will of God, when we serve God with a, you know, with a full heart, God will elevate us, he will promote us. Promotion found him because he was pursuing God. 
David was just doing what God wanted him to do, serving as he should be serving, and promotion. For, I mean, look at the, all the other brothers were in the house, but David was just, you know, he was just doing what he was, he was supposed to be doing. His promotion was the result of what was in his heart. See, if God can locate an obscure shepherd and promote him, he can surely place us where he needs us to be. When we are doing what God wants us to do, being who God wants us to be, he will promote us in Jesus' name. Amen? And just to repeat what, um, Acts chapter 13, verse 22, and I also want us to look at different um, versions of that in Acts chapter... 1322 says and when he had removed him he raised up unto them David to be their king to whom he also gave testimony and said I have found David the son of Jesse a man after my own heart which shall fulfill all my will New Living Translation says but God removed Saul and replaced him with David a man about whom God said I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. I think that's, you know, that's a bit of um, a lesson to learn there. He said, why did he choose uh, David? Because he said he will do everything I want him to do. When God looks at us, can he trust us that when he promotes us, when he elevates us, are we going to do everything that he wants us to do? Or we're going to get there? and just have our own purpose and do what we want. What we need to realize is when, wherever God is taking us, wherever, wherever God puts us, we have to be seeking first the kingdom of God and doing what he wants us to do. Not, you know, get there and do our own will and, you know, serve our own purpose. Amen. And in 1 Samuel 16, 11 says, Samuel said to Jesse, are there all thy children? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, and behold, he keeps the sheep. What was David doing? He was keeping the sheep. He was serving. He was doing what God wants him to do. And one of the things I want us to look at this evening, that David had five necessary prerequisites to be promoted. And what are those things? So that we can look into our hearts, and we can look, in, look into our lives. And even if we're not there yet, we can ask God to help us. You know, the Bible says, God, I love God asking people that says, God is working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And what are those, you know, prerequisites for promotion? Number one, a servant's heart. We need to have a what? A servant. We're going to go through all, each and one of those um, um, prerequisites as we go along. We need to have a servant's heart, humility, diligence, faithfulness, and integrity. Amen. So the first one we're going to be looking at is a servant's heart. We need to have a what? A servant's heart. That's one of the first prerequisites for promotion. Like we said in 1 Samuel chapter 16, David had a servant's heart. He served his father by taking care of his sheep in the field. He served, when, I mean, after he went to be with um, King Saul, he served King Saul in spite of the attacks of his life. He did everything that he ought to do. He just did what he knew that he had to do, despite everything that was going on around him. You know, he just didn't serve because it was convenient. He served because he had to serve. He continually referred to himself, to God, has, as thy servant. I am your servant. Psalm 116, verse 16 says, O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. And Psalm 119 verse 17 says, Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. And also God referred to David as his servant. In 2 Kings verse 18, 18 to 19, it says, Joram did evil in the sight of the Lord, yet the Lord will not destroy Judah for David his servant's sake, as he promised him. So you see, David maintained their servant's heart even when he sinned. So it, like I said, it's, David wasn't perfect, but he had a heart that God could use. His heart was tended towards God. So even when he made mistakes, he was able to you know, repent and say, Lord, I'm so sorry, forgive me. As in 1 Chronicles 21 verse 8, we don't have to turn there. <clears throat> so David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this evil thing, but now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of your servant. 
I have done very foolishly. So yes, David made mistakes, but he had a servant's heart. As soon as he was, you know, caught onto his mistake, what did he do? He repented and asked for forgiveness, and that's what we do. When we make mistakes, we're not perfect, but God perfects us. Amen? David's heart to serve opened the door for him to be promoted. It kept the door open for him to stay promoted. And we need to come to a place where we have a servant's heart, we're willing to serve. Amen? You know, one thing I've realized now, it is every, I mean, everybody wants to be at the top. Nobody wants to serve. It's as if, you know, there's just some, no, none of us are called to serve as in that, you know, that some people are just called naturally, you know, to be at the top. And some people are, no, as we are serving, as we are being faithful in little things, God will promote us. If you haven't been faithful in the little, even if you get to the top, you won't be able to stay there. You won't be able to maintain yourself there. So let's start from the big. Let's start from the base, you know, from where God has put us. Let's be faithful in little things. You know, this is one thing I always say that, you know, everybody wants to have a pulpit ministry. Everybody wants to hold the mic. Everybody wants to, you know, everybody is called to the, you know, pulpit ministry. But who's going to wash the toilet? Who is going to clean the seats? Who's going to sweep the floor? Somebody has to do it. I think it's really a great honor to be able to serve in little things because, you know, God will promote us when we're doing that. And there's nothing wrong in serving. It's just a great honor to do the things of God. Amen? And if you look at Matthew chapter 20, verse, I'm not going to read all the um, scriptures. It talks about, you know, the mother of James and John that asked for her sons to, to have top positions in Jesus' kingdom, uh, you know, when the other disciples heard what, G what James and John had asked, they were indignant. Like, what? I mean, but Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over the pe their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be First among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Even Jesus gave us an example. I mean, just thinking about this, um, this message this week, one of the things that the um, scriptures I was thinking about was when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. I mean, that is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Actually, just asked for water and bent down and washed the feet of his disciples. That is just the best example of servitude, of serving. You know, Jesus gave us an example, and he is our Lord. And, you know, Philippians 2, 5 to 9, see, the attitude of a servant says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. See, he took upon himself the form of a servant and, and he was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. But before God exalted him, what did he do? He humbled himself. He took upon himself the servanthood. And you know, the um, Philip's um, translation of that scripture says, Let Christ himself be your example as to what your attitude should be. We should have an attitude of a servant, of serving. There's nothing wrong. And when we do serve with that wonderful, I mean, when you look at this, uh, a lot of examples in the Bible, Daniel served before you know, God promoted him. Joseph was a good, is another good example. We need to come to a place where we're ready to serve other people. Not, you know, to be, we don't have to be slaves. Well, when we're doing it with a heart, with a attitude of God in us that, you know, this is, we're doing this for God. We're doing this unto the Lord. And we do it with joy. And God will promote us. Amen. You know, um, I remember my in my um, previous uh, church before I moved to King's House. I had um, we started this academy, 
and you know it as soon as um, my pastor announced it then my pastor then announced it God just laid it on my heart to walk up to the person that was in charge to say anything you want I'll do it I'll, you know just help you to serve and all she just required was me to make sure I printed all the outlines out and make sure I put them on all the chairs and after the service pack up and you know so every Sunday every Friday when we had to do the you know the mop up I was doing that and then one day I was told well you're going to start it I said what that would, excuse me <laughs> no, that is not uh, <laughs> that's not what I signed up for I signed up to just be you know clean after and make sure I tidy up and do all the you know, Lord, and said no. That's what you're doing. I said, well, yeah. and I believe that that's when I started realizing. Oh, okay, this this is something that God wants me to do. Amen. So the, another prerequisite for um, for promotion is humility. Humility. Amen. Proverbs eighteen verse twelve says, "Haughtiness comes before disaster, but humility before honor." And Proverbs 29 verse 23 says, A man's pride will bring him low, but he who is of a humble spirit will obtain honor. So if you want to be elevated, if you want to be promoted, we need to be humble. Amen? But, uh, James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves also in the sight of the Lord, <laughs> and he will lift you up. Amen? That's it. Humility. New Living Transition says it will lift you up in honor. Amen. God's Word Transition says it will give you a high position. And Amplified Classic says it will lift you up and make your life significant. First uh, Peter 5, 5 to 7 says be clothed with humility. Amen. It says likewise, you, you younger men, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yes, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, see, and gives grace to the humble. That's why Saul was resisted, was demoted. If you look at the story of Saul, he made a mistake, he refused to repent. He just, you know, and this is the scripture that supports what happened to him. It says, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care on, upon him, for he cares for you. You know, exhaust means to lift up high, to raise to the very summit of opulence and prosperity. Humble yourselves under the word of God. You know what, sometimes you pray, oh, what? sometimes I used to say that, like, how do I humble myself? And, you know, one of the ways we humble ourselves is humble ourselves under the word of God. Just do what God says, how God wants us to do it, and you will promote us. It says, humble yourself under the word, and the word will promote you. Doing what God says is how you humble yourself. That's all, you know, God, is this the way I should do it? Is this the way you want me to live your life, my life? Yes, Lord. Is, what, is this what the word of God says to do? Yes, Lord. That's how we humble ourselves. So even if we want, we think we should be doing something different or doing it in a different way, and we find that this is how God wants us to do it, we just say, Lord, you know best. Yes, I'll do it your way. I'll live the way you want me to live. I'll live in the Spirit. Obey your word. Amen? All you have to do is do what God tells you to do. That's how the blessing comes. It's not a head thing. It's a heart thing. Amen? Philippians 2, 3 to 4 says, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Just be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. I'll read that again. Philippians 2, 3 to 4, the New Living Translation says, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. Amen. You know, I've got something that says this is the wardrobe of humility. Humility thinks of others first. Humility is content behind the scenes. Humility doesn't push its way to the front. Humility willingly submits. Humility graciously receives correction. Humility makes adjustments. Humility doesn't ruin, ruin an apology with an excuse, you know, like, 
I'm sorry, but it was your fault. Yeah, if this thing happened, mm -mm, that's, just forget the apology. Humility expects nothing and appreciates everything. Humility accepts responsibility and doesn't shift blame. And finally, humility is easy to live with, work with, and be with. I don't know about you, I just love, you know, this character of humility. I just want to wear it. <laughs> Amen. So I always pray, when I read study about the humility, I say, Holy Spirit, only you can help, please, you know, help me to put on the gap of humility. Amen. Another prerequisite for promotion is diligence. Diligence. When you do something, do it right. Amen. What does um, diligence mean? It is conscientious in one's work or duties, industrious, hardworking, meticulous, thorough, doing more than expected, dependable, punctual, <laughs> constant, stable, and focused. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 4 to 5 says, uh, that's the NIV version, lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during the harvest is a disgraceful son. And then um, Proverbs 10, 26 says, lazy people irritate the employers like vinegar to the teeth or smoke to the eyes. And Proverbs 13, 4 says, Lazy people want much, but get little, while the diligent are prospering. So, it's, you know, we need to be diligent. We need to be diligent in, what, in whatever we're doing, in whatever, in church, where if we volunteer to do something in church, let's be diligent about it. Don't let just treat it anyhow because, well, I'm not getting paid. I'm just doing them a favor. No. The best honor, the more, for me, the most important honor that we have is doing something in the house of the Lord or doing something unto the Lord. Even if it doesn't look like it's paying us, God does not owe anyone. So the pastor, you're not, whatever we do, we're not doing it unto the pastor of the church. We're doing it unto the Lord. So we should do it diligently and do it, you know, with, the, with excellence. Amen? Uh, Proverbs 21 verse 5 says, The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not going to read all the scriptures because of time. But finally, for diligence, diligent people become great leaders. Work hard, um, Proverbs 12 20, verse 24 says, Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and never succeed. That's the Living Bible. Amen. So we need to be diligent in everything that we do. And if, I mean, <clears throat> because of time, but I mean, we've talked about Joseph before. If we, look, if we look at the story of Joseph, Joseph was diligent, and that's why by time Pharaoh, you know, looked at what he told him about his dreams and all of that. So, so who else are we going to put in, in, in charge of all of this? And he put Joseph in charge. And if you look at the story of Joseph, everywhere that Joseph was placed, he was diligent and he worked with excellence. Amen? Amen. And another prerequisite for promotion is faithfulness. Amen? Faithfulness. Proverbs um, 20 verse 6 says, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. And it is hard to find a faithful man. But in the house of the Lord, as Christians, when they look, when they're pointing at faithful, faithful people, we should be the ones that they're looking at. Ah, that man. There's something different about him. There's something different about her. It's because she's a Christian and she's faithful. Amen. The New Living Translation of verse six says, "Many will say they're loyal friends." But who can find one who is truly reliable? So to be faithful, we have to be reliable. And the message says, lots of people claim to be loyal and loving. But where on earth can you find one? <laughs> God found a faithful man in David, though. Um, 1 Samuel twenty-two fourteen says, Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David? Can you imagine, like they said, out of all the servants, none is as faithful as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house. That's a wonderful reputation. David was the most faithful among all of King Saul's servants. And we want, I mean, actually, we don't have to wonder why God promoted him. Amen? So we have to be faithful. Proverbs eleven thirteen says, A tale bearer reveals secrets. But he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. 
can we be trusted with matters? If faithful people can be trusted by those who they serve, they can keep a confidence. Amen? Proverbs 13, 17 says, A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful ambassador brings help. Faithful people are loyal to those who they serve. And loyalty also means that, you know, we need to be careful what we say about the employers or the people that we serve. If we are faithful to them, God will promote us. It's not about them, it's about how God wants us to be. Amen? Faithful people don't cheat. Just you use your employer's things the way you, your, you want your own things to be used. You know, sometimes it's amazing when, I tell you recently I picked up a, because my car broke down and I had to pick up a, you know, a courtesy car. You should have seen the state of that car. And I was just so curious to imagine that who on earth used this car before me? He was in a state. And I thought, that's just not good enough. You know, when we use other people's things, we should use it nicely. That's faithfulness. Because we treat other people's things the way, you know, we want our own things to be, you know, to be treated. Amen. Matthew 25, 21 says, Well done. Thou, you know, talking about the, you know, the parable of the, the, um, the talents, when God, you know, the Lord gave the talents. The, the people that were faithful got in Matthew 25, 21, the, Lord said to, uh, the, Lord, the master said to them, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. We need to be faithful where we are. You know, sometimes we're waiting to be promoted. We're waiting for that one million or five, ten thousand to start tithing, to start doing what God wants us to do with our finances. Treat what you have now with faithfulness, with all, you know, with, in, with diligence and all of that. And then God will promote you. Don't we think that, okay, when I get a million, I'll start tithing. When I get a million, I'll start giving to ministries. Mm -mm. Do what God wants you to do where you are, and he will promote you. Amen? So let's be faithful over little things so that God will promote us. And we have the pre another prerequisite for promotion is integrity. Amen? Integrity. Psalm 26 verse 11 says, But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Proverbs 26 to 7 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. The just man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. You know, we need to do what is right because it's the right, whether somebody is looking or not, and that's part of integrity. Whatever we do, we need to do it with integrity. Second Corinthians 3, 2 says, Your very lives are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. So when people are looking at our lives, what are they reading? We're being watched and everyone is reading us like a book. So and when they're reading us, what are they reading? They're studying our actions and we should walk in integrity. Second Corinthians 8, 21 says, We're careful to be honorable. That's Paul talking before the Lord, but also in the sight of men. There's greater demand for integrity from us because of who we represent. And let's look up, um, I love this Psalm, Psalm 15. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. Amen. If you have time, just go and read that psalm again. Psalm, psalm 15 verses 1 to 5. It describes, you know, an integral person. Amen. People of integrity keep their word. If you say you're going to be somewhere at 5, be there at 5. Except something happens that, you know, you just can't help it. When we give a word, if you say you're going to give something, you're going to do something, we need to make sure we do everything we can to keep our words. Amen. People of integrity do the right thing 
they return a rental care in better shape. You know, when we take somebody something, we should ask for permission. It might just be a little thing, but you know, it's a habit that we form. If you start with little things, you know, you go into you know bigger things. So we need to be people of integrity. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we've talked about this evening. Prerequisite for, um, prerequisite for promotion is servant's heart. You know, David served his father by taking care of his sheep and God saw that he would serve the people of Israel and he knew that he could trust him. So may the Lord, we be the kind of people that God can trust. And we talked about humility. You know, Psalm 18, 12 says, Ultimate comes before the sister, but humility before honor. Humility doesn't push its way to the top. And we talked about diligence. We have to be hard workers, dependable, punctual, thoughtful, resourceful. Amen. And of course, we talked about faithfulness. Faithful people are located and promoted by God. And also, we talked finally, we talked about integrity. Amen. There is a greater demand for integrity from us because of who we are and who we represent. And people of integrity won't lie, cheat, or steal. They tell the truth, they keep their word and do the right thing. Amen. So I'm trusting God that, you know, the Holy Spirit will help us to develop all these attitudes in our lives so that God will truly promote us. Promotion is not, you know, automatic. It just doesn't happen. If we want God, well, the Word of God to be fulfilled in our life and to see the manifestation of unusual elevation in our lives, then we have to allow these things to be developed in our lives. And we don't have to seek promotion. We just do what God wants us to do. And he will promote us. And by the end of this year, we'll truly say, this is a year of unusual elevation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just share a word of prayer. Father, we thank you because you are the one that promotes us. Father, we lift up your name and we say, Father, Lord, help us to develop. Because you are at work in us both to will and to do your good pleasure. So we ask, Father Lord, by your spirit, help us to develop this prerequisite site for promotion in Jesus' name. Help us to be people of the servant's heart. Help us to be people of humility. Help us to be people of diligence in the name of Jesus. Help us to be faithful, Father Lord, and to have integrity in every area of our lives. So that, Father Lord, as we walk your work, as we do what you tell us to do, you will truly promote us and elevate us in our lives, in every area of our lives, in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name. We ask that you bless your word into our heart. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will rise up in each and every one of us and help us to develop these characteristics in our lives in the name of Jesus. Help us to be people of honor. Help us to be people that will be promoted and will honor the Lord in every area of our lives, wherever we are, that when people see us, they will know that we are a different generation. We are not of this world. In Jesus' name, Father, we bless and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we've come to the end of our Bible study, and I trust God that you had a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord, and that, you know, that word is blessing to your heart. Well, I just want us to honor the Lord with our tithes and our offering. And, you know, talking about our tithes and offering, like I said, wherever we are in our finances, let's honor the Lord. Let's give as God prompts us, as the Holy Spirit prompts us, and of course, let's give our tithe faithfully. And as we do, God will promote us and elevate us in our finances in Jesus' name. My prayer is as we sow our seeds as led by the Spirit, as we give our tithe and honor the Lord with our tithe, that God will elevate us financially in Jesus' name. Amen. And all the ways that we can give are going to be on the screen. And God bless you and honor you in your finances as you honor Him in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now please, let's share our confession. I trust God for a year of unusual elevation. 
I will humble myself daily and stay radically committed to God's word, God's will, and God's way, no matter what. As a result, I will shine brighter and brighter and reflect God's glory every day and in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a lovely rest of the week and God bless you and thank you for joining us this evening. See you on Sunday by the grace of God. Amen.